Psalm 20, there's nine. How's about um, if we could do, um, Lex, if you could read one, two, three, and Carol, if you don't mind doing four, five, six, and I'll do seven, eight, and nine. Okay. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according. Uh, bear with me. Because I didn't bring my big Bible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grant thee according to thine, thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banner and Lord fulfill fulfill all thy portion. Now now know I that the Lord now know I that the Lord the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven and the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Saved Lord, let the King hear us when we call. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> um, as we were just talking about, in days and times like today, there are these. We call this perilous times. Amen. Amen. There are so many things going on. I'm sure you've watched Jerry Sandusky trial on TV. You know, there's so many things going on. God, you know, people think that they're getting away with the evil that they're doing in their lives, and they're not. God is catching. God, God's catching the ends of the sheets and ripping them off. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it says, "The Lord here, the Lord." Hear thee in the day of trouble. How many of us in here have a lot of problems? Troubles come on us out of the clear blue sky. Amen. Amen. And, you, and, and you know what? They come on like a flood. Mm -hmm. They don't come on. When the enemy bothers you, he doesn't bother you one at a time. He's not kind. He tries to hit you with everything that he can. And it says here, the Lord hear thee in a day of trouble. The name of God, the name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. God is telling you right here in his holy word, he will defend you. And we know that God is not a man that he should lie. When he says he's going to defend you, he's going to defend you. Mm -hmm. This is why we have to practice patience. Folks, you didn't hear me say it all the time. Patience is very important. Patience, you have to practice patience because the enemy is going to come at you full force with everything that he can. And you cannot, now is not the time to give up. If you're almost, we are almost at that end line, the end of the race. Who was it, Apostle Paul, that says, I have run my course. I've finished the race. We have to finish. Please don't stop. You are so close to the finish line right now, you just don't know. It would be a shame to give up. Don't give up. People nope. may mock you and make fun of you. Nope. Amen. Don't give up. Amen? And people might say that you're a Jesus, uh, what they call Jesus freaks. We are. <laughs> Don't give up. We are. You're you know? jealous, right? You know, if you're jealous, hey, pray about it, son. <laughs> you know, now is not the time to give up because God is going to defend you. Your family may have hurt you. Loved ones, male or female, may have hurt you. Whether your husband or your, or your, your wife or family members, no matter what happens to you, God is going to defend you. Right now, it may be looking dark. It may be looking kind of bleak. And we know we have a couple people here that have physical ailments. We've been praying on you. We've been praying on feet. We've been praying on legs. I caught a couple people upstairs and got down on my knees and prayed for them. And even though it may not look like that works, I'm not the one who heals. God is. Amen? Amen. Amen? And when it's time, you're going to be shocked. So hang in there. Amen? Believe. Um, remember, it, he says in verse 2, uh, send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Notice it says send help from the sanctuary. And we have a lot of sanctuaries nowadays that are not doing this. And you know what? God is going to judge them. They will be judged. 
And it's, it's my opinion, and I tell everybody how I feel about it. Everybody knows how I feel. I do not appreciate people who stand up in the pulpits of God's sanctuary and turn it into um, a, a entertainment, or they turn it into um, QVC. You know what I mean? This is not entertainment, and QVC has their own channel. Yes, they do. Amen, amen. 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 <laughs> so what happened when Jesus went into the temple, and he saw them selling doves and all that, and had money, or money changers, and he said, money changers. What did he say about the house of God? What did he say? What did he do? First of all, what did he do? He turned the tables on them. Did Jesus walk in and say, oh, honey, you're not supposed did he? No. Did Jesus walk in whispering? No. no. Uh, Jesus walked in, he turned the tables on him, and he said, "You, my, my father's house is supposed to be a house of prayer, and you all have turned it into what? A den of thieves. And th th look how many people don't have a church to go to. Look how many people are afraid to go to church. Look how many people that don't want to go to church because their clothes aren't good enough. Are we going to church? Because our clothes aren't good enough? Does no, God want you to wear an $800 suit to come see him? No. 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 Amen. What is the problem? There's something wrong, y'all. Mm -hmm. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt, verse 3, and accept thy burnt sacrifice. And then he says, Selah, right there. Anytime you see in the Bible the word S-E-L-A-H, that means stop and think about this. Mm -hmm. That means ponder on that for a minute. Amen. And in verse 3, remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifices. Now, back in the Old Testament, they did burnt sacrifices. And back in the Old Testament, they did certain burnt offerings, different types of offerings. But in the New Testament, we're living in New Testament times. And anytime you see burnt sacrifices or offerings, that's prayer. And they're asking God, remember all of our prayers, Lord God. The Bible says, I believe in the book of Revelations, that God takes, listen, I, I don't know if you know this or not, that God takes all of our tears and our prayers, he takes our tears and puts them in a bottle. God remembers everything. There are things you prayed for before and you may feel like you didn't get an answer, but God has heard your prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember all thy prayers and accept our prayers, and think about it, acceptable offerings, uh, grant, uh, verse 4, grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. Now, are we, God says he will give us the desires of our heart, but the only desires that we are going to get are the ones that go along, align with his word. Amen? Amen. Okay, this is not, this is not a voodoo or a hoodoo or witchcraft where you <laughs> pray to God and say, I like George and I want him as my husband. It doesn't go that way. No, it doesn't. Right, <laughs> you know, God may not have George for your husband, amen? amen. So you got to go according to his will. George might take you down and you might lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. amen. Uh, grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. What God says happens is going to happen. Uh, we will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. We're going to, re listen, if you are saved, this is the main thing I see here. It just hit me just now. We will rejoice in our salvation. I woke up this morning and didn't want to do what I am supposed to do. How many days have you had that? Amen. How many, see, how many times did you want to do something and the enemy changes your mind? It's like, oh, you don't want to do that today. You know, won't you do it some other time? Or aren't you tired? <laughs> aren't you tired? Isn't that something? And, and, and what kills me is I slept about 10 hours. <laughs> but he's still trying, the enemy's still trying to tell me, aren't you tired? You know, and I, I, I laid in bed this morning. I said, Lord, help me. Jesus, and I had to say it three or four times until I felt it. And I said, Jesus, help me. Lord, help me. There was nothing wrong. There was no reason for me to feel that way. And I knew exactly who it was. When you begin to feel oppression, mm -hmm. and when you begin to feel depression, that's not God challenging you. No. That's the enemy trying to get you to trip. Yeah. Those are the times, like my daughter told me this morning, work in the opposite spirit. But work in, do you know what it means by work in the opposite spirit? Whenever you don't feel like doing something, mm. do it anyway. <coughs> Amen? Amen? That's like doing dishes. You don't feel like doing dishes, and your, your sink looks bad, and your kitchen looks dirty, do them anyhow. Mm. Do them when you don't feel like
feel like doing it, right? right? Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. That's what my daughter was singing. Rejoice means <laughs> clapping. Rejoice means uh, uh, crying out to God. It means singing to him, singing songs and praying to him. We don't care who's listening to us in our apartments or our houses, right? Do you care if somebody hears you no. singing to God? No. Annabelle can sing. <laughs> <laughs> She's the singer of the building and does it very well, thank you. And she don't mind. Does it bother you to praise the Lord? No. Does it bother you to sing? And what happens is when other people hear you singing, we get happy. Mm -hmm. Amen. You ought to hear it. She, I mean, word for word, she knows every song. You know, that's rejoicing in Christ Jesus. We will rejoice in thy salvation. Don't be sad. If you're sad while you're calling yourself being saved, something is amiss. Something's wrong. Every time you feel that sadness, come on, bind him in Jesus' name. I bind you in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ. He already overcame you on a cross, and you have no power over me. Don't try me. I bind you and your brothers. Mm -hmm. See? All of them. Because doesn't it say that sometimes whenever you sweep the demons out, and if you don't live right and do the things you're supposed to do, he'll come back with seven of his brothers. Yeah. And you don't realize it. Amen. But you might be bothered by more than, there's more than one. There's strength in numbers. That's positive or negative. Amen. And then, um, the, the, and I like how in the middle of verse 5 it says, and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. What is the name for the band? God who... Hand, who's our banner? Anybody know the name? Jehovah Nisi. Amen. Jehovah Nisi. God is our banner. It says, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Your only, but the banner over you is love. The Bible says God is love and Jehovah Nisi is his name. If you just come to our Bible studies on Tuesday, we did, I think we just did the names of God and you will see Jehovah Nisi is one of his names. The banner over you is not Satan's playground. Okay? The banner over you is love. It's God. And verse 6, Know now I that the Lord saveth his anointed. That's your answer right there without even reading on. The Lord saves his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Three things. The Lord Saves his anointed. What does God say in the Bible about his anointed? Touch not. Anybody know? Touch not thy anointed. Uh -huh. And do thy. No harm. Prophets no harm. That's why you keep getting up every morning. <laughs> uh-huh. They keep trying you. And they're trying you hard. And they're losing every time. Nobody will continue to. What's the definition of uh, madness? What's, how's it go? Insanity. It was the definition of insanity. Keep doing the same mistake or expecting a different outcome yeah keep doing the same the enemy continuously tries to bother us and hurt us and it's insanity who was it? Einstein that said that the definition of insanity what is the definition of insanity and it is continuously doing the same thing over and over and over and getting the same results so folks let's make Satan insane <laughs> let's drive him mad amen, amen. amen. <laughs> I don't mind amen, <laughs> amen. And, and that was the first thing I noticed and then he will hear him from his holy heaven holy we have to live holy lives we spoke about this I think Tuesday as well in, in Bible study we have to live holy folks it is not corny to live holy it is not corny to live holy we have to stop the cussing mm -hmm. because you know there is something called the spirit of cursing there are some people that curse their own lives because they won't stop cursing. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize this. When you, when you say, God damn, do you know you're asking God to damn something? Mm -hmm. And not only that, his last name is not damn. That's right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, <laughs> stop it. You know? You're, you're driving insane. Drive the enemy insane. Okay? And then another thing, um, the Lord, let me see, verse 6. It says, and he, it, it, well, from his holy heaven, with the saving strength of his right hand. Who sits on the right hand of God? Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus sits on the right hand of God. And it says, with the saving strength of his right hand, his divine hand. 
God, when he touches you with his right hand, the left hand is known for the law. The law is on the left hand of God. And the right hand we know is Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus sits on the right hand side of God. Jesus is your savior. That's why it says the saving strength of his right hand. Call upon his name. Call his name. There are people right now arguing over the name of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what I do. There are people arguing over the name of Jesus. The, the, the Orthodox Jews and the Messianic Jews. Some people say his name is really Yeshua, which it was. That was his real name. The Greeks changed it over to Jesus is a Greek interpretation. But what they're trying to say is if you don't say Yeshua, you're not going to heaven. And they're trying to say Jesus don't know we're calling him. So now Jesus it has no intelligence and he doesn't realize that whenever you say Jesus, he doesn't realize you're calling on him. This is what they're doing. They're shortening the strength of God. God made different languages. God made different languages. You mean to tell me Jesus doesn't know that Jesus is the Greek interpretation of his, uh, his uh, Israeli name? See, they're arguing over his name. Whether you say Yeshua, now they're saying it's Yahushua. Now they're adding in the O's and the H's. Mm -hmm. Always, the devil stays busy. Mm -hmm. They have Yeshua, Yahushua, Jesus, Yehu, Yeshu. They're changing his name. Just call on his name, the name of Jesus. I am sure when they wrote the King James Version of the Bible, God was okay with Jesus. Amen? Call on his name. Let's say it now. One, two, three. Jesus! Amen. Ha, I heard demons flee. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? I heard demons flee. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And in uh, verse 7, some trust in chariots, mm -hmm. some trust in big cars, transportation, some trust in horses. These are all false trusts, not just transportation. These are all false trusts. Some people, uh, who was it, a man from, I want to say, I hope I'm right, a man from Egypt just said on the news the other day that he consults. Now, this is a general of the army, I believe. I want to say it's Egypt. Yeah, Egypt. He, was it Egypt? He said he consults with his crystal ball to find out what's going to happen to Egypt. Crystal ball? The, uh, we're talking about generals. We're talking about people in, ho in high places consulting crystal balls. So don't trust in false trust. We don't trust in idols. Don't trust in statues. And even though we wear the cross around our neck, it is a sign that we believe in Jesus Christ. It is a sign to let people know that you love the Lord. In fact, I forgot to go on today. It's, it's a sign. It's not magical. It's not magical. What works in your life is Jesus' blood. He said, not the gold, not the silver. The cross is awesome. And there's power in the cross. But they're talking about the power that on the cross when he died on that cross and shed his blood, blood came out of his body, and water came out of his body for you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say silver and gold came out of his body. Mm -hmm. Amen? The work of the cross. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, we got to trust not in idols, not American idol. None of them. We, America and all around the world, we have so many idols, it's a shame. We put things in front of God. And the things that they put, what we don't realize is the things that they put on TV nowadays is mind control. Mm -hmm. If you watch all that stuff on TV and you believe all that stuff they say on TV, mm -hmm. you're trusting in the chariots and you're trusting in the horses and you're going to miss him when he comes. Mm -hmm. We have to stay in tune with Jesus Christ. Stay in tune with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Have confidence in God. They are, and then uh, verse 8 tells it right there. Verse 8 says they are brought down and fallen. These are the people that have confidence in the world. These are the people that you hear about. Excuse me, that worship the world, love the world, and wouldn't change it for the world. These are the people who fell in love with silver and gold and high status. How many people do we know even like in the entertainment field? And how many people do we know in the religious field, you hate to say it, in the religious field that sold their soul for status? Mm -hmm. Sold their souls for status. Now, do they not realize that God's going to knock them down one day? God's going to say, well, you're supposed, you were supposed to be doing this for me. 
seek for the kingdom of God. You did this for your own self. That's selfishness, and I don't have room for it in the kingdom. Amen. So people can keep making fun of us with small ministries. Continue. I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind at all because we are out here to save souls. We are not out here to get on the Oprah show. Okay? Amen. We are not out here so that the government will like us. Amen. We are out here to save souls. They're brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. As long as you believe in Jesus Christ, the same way he rose up, the song says he got up, up, up. He did. Same way he rose up, you're going to get up as well each and every time. Every time the enemy thinks he knocked you down with fear, watch out for fear. Every time the enemy thinks he knocked you down, you're going to get back up again. And you're going to testify about the goodness of the Lord. And we're waiting for yours when you come back again. Yeah. Every time, every time. And then verse 9, save Lord, let the king hear us when we call. When you call on the name of Jesus, King Jesus, is that Vicky Winan says, long as I got King Jesus, mm -hmm. I don't need nobody else. Amen? Amen. Amen. So who do we call? Jesus. Amen. Who do we call? Jesus. Jesus. Who do we call? Jesus. 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 Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Trust in God. The church blesses the king. In his exploits. We need to bless God. Bless God. Each and every day of your lives. Because he's blessed you. Um, the church expresses. A confidence in God's favor. Do not end up being. An unappreciative child. Appreciate everything that God did for you. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father Lord God. We thank you for the word that you've given us today. Lord God. And write it upon the tablets of our hearts. Lord God. We are the king's kid, and there is no one or nobody that can take us down and make us think otherwise, Lord God. Fight our battles, Jehovah Shammah, hallelujah. We bless you, hallelujah. Lord God, each and every day of our lives, Lord. Cover us, Lord God. Cover us with your covering, with your love. The banner over us is your love. What people want to know why we do what we do, because we want to not only talk about the kingdom of God, we want to live in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, and Lord, for the people that uh, have, didn't make it today that love your word, we're praying for them, lifting them up to your lap as you sit in your heavenly and holy throne, Lord God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Next we will have a reading.